Hello everybody, can you hear me? Yeah. As you can see, as you can see I'm wearing one of these dust prevention masks from getting gunge in my lungs and I, I really recommend you get one of these. Spend $20 and get one, save yourself and they are very, very good because um, they allow you to breathe quite nicely. It doesn't seem to impede your, um, your breathing. Sometimes some of these masks make you feel a bit claustrophobic. But this one, it's fairly, it's just like normal breathing. It's not like you're wearing it really. It's a bit of a, bit of a fag to put the thing on and everything, you know, but uh, once it's on, um, these have been tested and they're supposed to be very good. And it is a respirator and the, the model number is 3M6300-0. Comes in a bag. Anyway, I recommend you get one of those. Uh, so, what am I doing? Um, let's just bring the camera down here. In fact, what I am doing is I'm just getting ready for a. If I can s turn this thing. Uh, a little Raku firing. As you can see, I've got my kiln down there. And I'm just here on the table, and I've just been um, mixing up some some raku glaze, and I've got to carry on with that now um, a bit more. Let me just bring the camera over here. We've got the fire, the fire alight down there. Thankfully, <laughs> a little hot water there. You see on the stove. That's what you need, you see, in a... That's what you need in a... In a studio is a... Is a decent fire to keep warm, to dry your pots, all of these things. So... Alright. Um, Well, I've got a jug with some hot water. Um, we have a scales here, the digital scales. I have a, a stainless steel bowl, which has got some water in, but we're going to get rid of that water now, put it back in the jug. I can use the scales, you see, in conjunction with this bowl. The bowl didn't originally come with the scales. In fact, I bought this I bought it yesterday, folks, down at the Goodwill Center. <laughs> a grand total of everything was half price, so it was only 30 cents. But these bowls, if you can find these bowls, I recommend them. And they come in, as you know, in all sizes, don't they? I've got... I've got different ones here, you see, of all different sizes, and they're so useful because being metal, you can put them onto the onto the wood burning stove. Um, they're great for mixing up glaze like, like I'm doing here now. In fact, I'm going to give you this glaze recipe in, in a moment. Um, what I've got to do, what I've done is I've dry mixed and I've written down the recipe here for you 
which I'm going to um, hang on a minute. That's the recipe, folks. This is for a good, uh, for a raku glaze that works, it's very, fairly low maintenance, it seems to work quite well, uh, generally gives a quite a nice white crackle. Okay, um, I've got a few little small, small bowls and things that I wanted to do. Um, so, the measurement is in ounces, okay, so we've got 80 of frit, at the top, and that's 3134, ferro 3134. Ferro do different kinds of frits, but this is a ferro frit, 3134. 10 is flint, and 10 is kaolin, or china clay. So you can um, convert that into ounces. All right, and I think 80 ounces I think it comes out to five pounds, if I remember correctly. Five pounds. Um, yeah. So I'll give that to you. Anyway, I've already I've already weighed the ingredients with my with my digital scale, and I'm now ready to. Well, I have already added the water, but I'm now actually ready to sieve it through the 100 mesh sieve. Okay, so I've got one of these, which is a 100. And I'm going to put it into this little... I'm actually short of small buckets at the moment, and this is the only thing I could find that was um, going to be suitable. So, let's just bring the camera over, over there so we can see that in a bit more detail. Okay, there we are. Now, as you'll notice, I'm filming in the, with the other camera today because I do prefer the sound of this one. It seems to be a lot clearer, doesn't it? Um, la, 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 la. You know, when you're getting ready to do some sieving, it's good to have some water handy, it's good to have a sponge handy. It's good to have also something to push the glaze through the sieve. And um, I do use, I can lay my hands on it. Um, yes, over here in my toolbox. Of course. I usually have quite a lot of these hanging around. Yeah, one of these, um, an old credit card or an old library card or something. Okay, they're quite good because you can you can go backwards and forwards like this and push the um, push the glaze through. All right, so there we are. My card. I've got my brew here, which is now... Now do be careful when you are adding... Add your water. Probably the best way of doing it, in actual fact, is to add the dry powder to the water. I didn't do it in, the, in this, this case, in this particular case. Because it wasn't convenient for me to do so. But ideally, I'd have some water, say, in a bowl or a bucket and then I'll add the ingredients to the water. It's better to do it that way, you get a better mix. But anyway, we've done it this way now. I added, in fact, the water to the dry powder. But you can, you know, with a wooden spoon or a piece of wood or a whisk, you can just mix it. Okay, so I'm gonna take this now. I'm only telling you these things because it's, you know, there's a lot of people out there who, who you know, have never mixed up, they've never mixed a glaze in their life, you know, and they're a little bit freaked out by it. It's actually nothing to, to be... Yeah, of course you need to be careful because it's like you're mixing ingredients, you're mixing... But it's like cooking. 
you know, it's a bit of this, it's a bit of that, it's a bit of, hang on, where's the recipe, let's have a look. Oh yes, okay, right, okay. Where's the scales? Oh yeah, okay, right, okay, well we just get the ingredients, you know, it's like weighing out flour, isn't it? I mean, it's not that, it's not that difficult, so... Nevertheless, there are people out there who, who are, are used to, are used to buying all of their glazes. Of course, if you buy all of your glazes, it's a very expensive way of going about your hobby, or your profession. I mean, if it's your profession, you won't be buying glazes period, you'll be making them up yourself because if you see the cost of the raw materials in comparison to a made up glaze, you soon, you soon get the picture that you know, you're know you going to have to make up your own glazes because uh, it's a bit like that actually with, um, with making kilns as well because kilns are terribly expensive things, I always say, and yet really they're so simple, you know, I, you can save yourself a fortune if you make your own kiln, uh, you know, like this little raku kiln that I've got here, which you've, you've seen before. Um, so just to bear those things in mind. Right, let's get on with this. Enough waffle, enough talk. So I'm just going to get this now. This is a, probably a good, a good, you know, I've got different sizes of, um, in fact, these are brand new. I've never used them because I've I was at Standard Ceramic Supply in Pittsburgh the other day and uh, I needed some stuff so yeah I bought these but they're about $25 a piece but once you've got them, you've got them. If you look after them they'll last you for a little while. But I've got different sizes here, I bought a 60, an 80 and a 100 which I'm going to use now. Um, and a hundred mesh is, is a good is a good is a good mesh. See what happens when you take a, a glaze like this, that's mixed with water. What does the sieve do? What it does is it, it gets rid of any dirt or dirty particles that there are in there, grits and things like that. That's one thing it does do, of course. But the other thing it does, a, a, a sieve, it mixes the ingredients. It blends them together. Okay? Okay, let's go. So we just give it a stir and we're going to pour that just into the bowl here. Let's just bring the camera a little closer so you can see what I'm up to. Dee, 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 dee. Whoops, right, there it is. So I'm going to take my credit card and just go backwards and forwards like this. Right, there we go. You want to keep it on the move, the, the glaze, just give it, keep it stirred, you see. And then it, um, it'll be all, it won't sediment out. Don't be thinking, oh my goodness, he's getting it on his hands, look. 
is going to be contaminated. All right, you won't be contaminated. Most of these glaze ingredients are fairly, you know, things like china clay and quartz and whiting and felspar, you know. It doesn't matter if you get it on your hand. I mean, you wash it off, of course, afterwards. Sponge it off. Um, but they're not uh, sort of life-threatening in any way, or toxic. I'm talking about the, the majority of, of the glaze materials that you'll be using. They're not. They're not toxic. You know, you can. You know, because when we're glazing, then we're dipping them in the in the in the you know the glaze. We get glaze on our hands. Okay, so. Oh, hang on a minute. It seems like we've got. Hello, I'm just in the middle of a clip at the moment. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okie dokie, so. So, right. Now it takes a... It takes it takes a little time, doesn't it? You know, for the for the for the mixture to go through. So, you know, don't be impatient. Just just gently move it backwards and forwards. perchance have made made it a little bit too watery let's say um, don't worry just let the glaze settle in the bucket and you'll find that it'll sediment out somewhat and you'll get water on the top if you then just carefully take a just take carefully take a sponge and just you'll be able to get the water off. If not a sponge, you can take a, a flat, a flat, almost like a plate, and just hold that into the liquid. Because with a plate, you see, you haven't got to go down very far, so you won't, you won't touch down into the sediment. Okay, you'll just scoop the water off the top. Well, wow, nice bit of sunshine today, but pretty chilly outside. I think we're not even reaching 40 degrees Fahrenheit, so we're still in the 30s today, but it certainly makes a difference to see the sun, that's for sure. Okay, folks, well, I'll finish this off in a minute now. Uh, I don't want you to have to sit there and watch me. Uh, making the scraping, scratching noise. Um, yeah, as I said in the last clip and I mentioned in the one before, um, Japan Appeal, Potters of the World Unite. Um, go to the text part, the description of this clip and you'll find a way if you want to give some money, then, you know, it doesn't matter how big or how small. Bigger is better, but you know, um, you can go, uh, it, it tells you there what you can do to help out. Um, it's nice to help something, you know, sometimes when you have a big disaster, I sort of think to myself, wow, it's so big, you know, where do you begin? Well, this, the, this, is, this is a place where one can begin. It's a place, Mashiko, and, um, you know, they need some help. So, um, don't feel that your contribution doesn't matter, it won't be noticed, because it will. 
it's when we all unite together and get the combined effect of helping. So, um, yeah, the details are there anyway on the, on the, alongside this clip. Um, for any more information about my pottery workshops that I run here, you can go to my website, simonleachpottery.com and there's information there and dates relating to workshops. There are also uh, more information there about other places where I'm going to be because I'm going to be in um, Colorado beginning of July, July 4th to the 15th at the Anderson Ranch. So if you live near the Anderson Ranch and you're interested then go to the Anderson Ranch website and you can find details about that there. Um, what else? Uh, oh yeah, June I'm in the at the Pennsylvania Guild of Craftsmen. That's in um, Lancaster, near Lancaster. I'm going to be there and that's in early June. The dates again, you go to my website you can see the dates. And then in September I am at the Peters Valley Craft Centre in Leighton, New Jersey. So again, um, the dates are there. I think that's September the September the 10th and the 11th. Um, yeah, apart from that, I'm probably going to go to Europe for a spell. Lie on a Spanish beach. <laughs> Put my feet up. Have a rest. Um, okay, so we'll continue with this and we'll do some glazing and some firing. Okay? Simon Leach saying, keep practicing. See you soon. Bye bye. Dee -dee. Dee -dee 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 -dee.